ready to introduce our very first uh, speaker of the day, Fred Shabesta. Um, as we alluded to earlier, he is, uh, he's kicking off the session. He's got a lot of great stories and perspectives. He's an Australian born entrepreneur uh, and an early stage investor. Uh, he's the founder of a global FinTech business named Finder. Uh, it is now worth over half a billion dollars. So yeah, unicorns indeed. Uh, he has 22 years experience in building businesses and he recently released a number one selling book on Amazon, Go Live, 10 Principles to Launch a Global Empire. So some good, good wisdom therein. He is an author, a blogger, award-winning digital marketer, media commentator, mentor, and active member of the startup community. And I know that he is one of Australia's most respected entrepreneurs, known for not just the business, but also building great high-performance teams, working in great ventures, very mission-driven, and disrupting stale ideas. Uh, he's also started a club of disruptors and high achievers, and he really is committed to helping others to you know, bring the best of their life and to build their ideas. Fred is actually joining us from New York City where he is serving as the interim CEO of Finders US Business Operations. And as per usual, I'm sure he will bring fresh ideas and take us on a journey. It's gonna be a little bumpy out there, uh, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. So please welcome Fred Shabesta in conversation with yourself, Blake Hutchison. Hi Fred, how are you doing? Blake, how are you my man? I'm very I'm sorry, well. Sorry, I um, I burned the, the midnight oil from three thirty in the morning last night, so I I'm running a little bit behind time. So I hope everyone feels this is the real the real hustle. Got the <laughs> got the coffee in hand, so I can tell you that this is, I'm back to I'm back to the to the to the to the real startup uh, experience. So everyone, yeah, you got to take a step back sometimes and get back into it and. Yeah, as much as you achieve things, I think it's good to go back. So here I am. Here's the real, the real raw, raw me right now. Yeah, this is a real raw you. I'm getting a, a unique insight to the size of your nostrils, Fred. It's um, there we are. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, the, and, and the size of the newest buildings that are constructed in New York. Yeah, I'm like two minutes away from my office, but um, let's start. All right, let's do it, mate. Um, so we've got, you know, 2,000 registered attendees uh, for our sessions today. Um, so a bunch of really interested people in, in your journey as well as the journeys of all of the speakers today. So it's going to be really cool. Um, but, but tell us a little bit about what's going on. So, you know, you've got this new book coming out, Go Live, 10 Principles to Launch a Global Empire. Um, most people who know you know you for your Australian entrepreneurship success um, but but there you are over in over in New York, I guess, starting the next chapter of uh, Finder's very very successful journey today. Um, and I think you say, what do you say here? You say, as a startup, there's only one rule, and that's that there are no rules. So just give us a sense of your thesis, how Finder was built to this point, half a billion dollars in market value, and and what you're up to. I think what is important, and I think a lot of um, international companies experience this is, you know, you've got your home market and, you know, I think that's interesting, but then taking your product overseas is really, really challenging. Um, there's lots of intricacies, lots of localizations, lots of all sorts of things that you need to do. And, you know, I think the premise of um, what I've always experienced is, you know, I think all throughout my life, I started as a, a pretty rebellious child. Um, and I went to school and I got into trouble a lot. And, you know, and I sort of turned up and went to the university lectures that I wanted to go to. And eventually, actually, I, I never actually finished computer science, uh, which I studied. And I actually coded the Finder website in the beginning. So I actually failed computer languages as well, just, just to give you the context. Um, but I learned the ideas that I needed. And I knew the journey and direction that I wanted to go on. Um, and so, you know, I, I think there's um, patterns and heuristics that, um, you know, I think there are great successful people they follow and they go and they achieve. And I think in some small way, I am, it's not to say that I can't do that. I just don't choose to do that. I choose to do it my own way. And I think that is the centerpiece. That's the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey. And the reason why, 
I wrote this book is to actually write down, not necessarily the rules, but actually write down the rules that I'm, obviously I, I break the rules all the time, but the actual um, principles that I eternally believe. And what are those? They're, they're really things which no matter what circumstance or moment in time, when you're making a decision, what are you going to uphold? What are things that you're not negotiable about? And, and that's really what this book's about. It's trying to document that. And in some small way, you know, I'm not saying fun is not necessarily like a, you know, a multi-billion dollar company, but it is certainly, you know, I think it's, I think it's pretty remarkable to be, you know, self-funded and, and get to the size that we're at. And I think we're still growing and we're still innovating and still creating and, that's really hard as well. You know, when you're, you're a bigger company to, you know, to innovate and create again. And I think that's where some of these principles come from. And I think I'm happy to talk about them and yep. wherever else you want to go, Blake, I, you know, I love talking about NFTs and cryptocurrency. I'm so deep into NFTs right now. I can't, it can't get much deeper. Well, I can't wait to hear your perspective on that. I will ask you, I promise I will, but I want to know something. Um, so find is obviously a, a, a comparison search engine. Um, let me know if I got that description a little bit wrong and you've got a more perfect description for it. But you've now got so many categories and clearly you didn't start with as many as you now have. So how do you go from, what was the first category? Can you just tell us all? Yeah, we, we began, uh, we actually, the, the start was an experiment um, of building our own website. So I used to run a digital marketing agency. We used to build people's websites. And you know, the first site we thought, okay, hey, why don't we build some of our own? Because, you know, I could imagine, um, you know, that's sort of, sort of definitely one way to, to, to do a lot, you know, better in the internet is to own the actual site itself and do the experiment. So we built a sports betting site, we built a poker site, we built the Mother's Day present site. Um, shout out to, is it Geist, who was a digital marketer? Big fan of digital marketing. <laughs> um, I think it's like learning to drive. In, in, in internet business, digital marketing. Um, it's absolutely essential. It's not negotiable. Um, you know, and I think, um, well, I've got a story about Flipper as well, Blake. So just remember, remind me of that. I met um, one of your Sorry. founders in Las Vegas, but we'll come back to that. Um, and those experiments, a lot of them, you know, didn't work. And the one that did was the credit card comparison site. Okay. And that was the first niche. It was called Credit Card Finder. And we didn't actually own finder.com.au and we didn't own finder.com either. That's a whole other story. Um, I'm sure that, you know, buying domain names and the reason why we bought Credit Card Finder is, is I basically got the, I downloaded the keyword list of credit card and found the top, you know, went from the top and started registering the exact match keywords. And the sixth most popular one was Credit Card Finder. And that's how Credit Card, that's how Finder came to be. And then you know, we couldn't, we, we started comparing home loans and personal loans. We had personal loan finder, home loan finder. And the problem was, that's, it's very hard to advertise that on the TV, yeah. you know, and build a brand. Because I think that's where a lot of companies start with a growth hack, you know, and ours was really in search engine marketing. And then you need to go past that. You need to grow into a more sustainable moat. And building a brand was really that journey. And, and, and in that journey, we needed to change the name to something which everyone could remember. And that was simple. And that was finder.com.au. You can actually sing it in Australia for anyone who's from Australia. Anyone, anyone out there would know that in Australia we might know the jingle. Not in America yeah, or the UK. It's, 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 a, it's a very significant jingle that every Australian has uh, etched into their, <laughs> into their memory for life. So that's pretty awesome. But okay, so you start with Credit Card Finder and how many categories are there now? Oh, it's thousands. Thousands yeah, we compare. of categories. You can, you can actually compare the ways to fly out of space on Finder. Okay. Um, you can compare air conditioners. You can compare shampoos, barbecues, um, you know, VPN services, um, you know, obviously cryptocurrency exchanges, where to buy certain coins, stocks, you know, particularly stocks. Stocks have been really popular of recent um, with, you know, GameStop and all this kind of stuff. And so as um, you think about growth, Fred, how do you decide, how, does you, how do you or the team decide what is the next category to enter? We listen to the customer. Um, what does the customer want? And, and then Finders really evolved past sort of that, you know, I think that comparison business is one of our growth engines. And the new engine is really this app. I don't know if anyone, it, it's not only available right now in Australia, it's not available 
Um, but that's why I'm here in the US to build it and roll it out as well. And really what we do there is we help you earn money while you sleep. So, you know, it's automated savings. So you, you can end up your credit, your, your accounts and, you, and compare your products and you can, you know, find savings. And then you take those savings and you earn money while you sleep. And we've got this remarkable product about to come out. Um, so you actually transfer money into our wallet. There's an actual yeah. digital wallet in the app. And you'll be able to earn 4% interest on your money. It'll just tick over while you sleep. Um, and that's possible only because of our understanding of cryptocurrency. Um, and that's, that's really the journey of where we're going. We're building this two, two sort of, I don't know if this is, I don't know if there's a terminology for this, but there's sort of what I think of it as there's a two-phase business. Two-phase businesses are like, you've got your core business making cash flow, and then you've got your growth experiments. And, and that, that takes a lot of courage. Innovation is really hard. You know, I'm a big fan of Clayton Christensen's Innovator's Dilemma book for anyone who's looking to innovate their business. Um, and, you know, I think this app is a stepping into the ether to build continuous utility for the customer, to go and find the new growth lever. Because, you know, once you've compared everything, so what? You know, that's not the end. And obviously, we can make that better and incrementally better. But to grow... See, I admire companies like I love. You know which company I love the most, Blake? Try which and one? guess. Uh, which company would Fred like the most? Um, I don't know. Robin Hood. <laughs> I love Robin Hood, and I use Robin Hood. I think it's great. It's a great product. I think that's an example of where user experience trumps um, product feature. You know, Charles Schwab, Schwab is zero dollars it's brokerage, but it's just hard to use. My favorite company that I love is Sony. Okay, why? Sony, well, you know, Sony was going along, right? And they were building, you know, TVs and they were building uh, cell phones. And then um, it was probably in the early 2000s. It might have been in the 90s. I can't remember what exact day. But Nintendo dominated, absolutely dominated the console gaming uh, market. And they thought that there was a, a group of individuals inside um, Sony that believed that 3D, uh, putting a 3D chip, because remember Nintendo is what used to be um, 2D, yep. by putting a 3D chip inside a console, they could gain market share. And the chairman of, 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 of Sony, whose hand was shaking as he signed the purchase order for 1.3 million 3D chips, and they built the PlayStation. Now, let's, let's contextualize that. Which organization all of a sudden goes from building, you know, consumer products, the Walkman, um, RAM, that's actually, used to, the Sony used to build RAM, and they built it in a great way, um, to then... Um, building a PlayStation. That is just remarkable, absolutely remarkable. And that's the kind of courage, that's the kind of innovation, the mistakes they would have had to have made in order to go and do that. That's the kind of company that I want Finder to be. I want it to survive and endure. I don't see it like a unicorn company. I see it like a phoenix continuously reinventing itself and rising. Finder is... Is, is here for the long haul, a thousand years of Finder. Uh, mate, that is, that's awesome. It's inspirational. Um, you are currently in 70 countries. Um, I think I've, I've got this right by, you know, the, 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 the business is worth over half a billion dollars. Um, so you're in the US now. Does Finder exist in the US or is this the 71st country? No, Finder exists here. Um, I can, when I do this, we'll just turn the, turn the you can just see, it. here's the, there's the finer office, there's, there's New York City, <laughs> it's right here. Yeah, and, this is and, the actual, this is, this is, this is the raw, raw feeling of starting up in a, in a, in a, in a, this city's hard. This is a tough city. This is not an easy city. This is a tough city. And so how do you think about, um, how do you think about growing the US market, given all you've just talked about, about, um, building an mm. everlasting company, um, celebrating failure, um, admiration for companies like Sony, which take major, major risk to get it right and all of the failings they must have had to go through to get to that point. How do you, how do you think about dominating that market? You know, 
Um, it's a great question, Blake, and it's probably uh, what I want to paint a picture of for everyone who's listening on this call, and I'm sure the replays are there, but I want you to think about, you know, the color red, stained red. And I want you to think about, imagine an ocean of red, an entire ocean. And that red is filled with the blood absolutely all the competitors fighting each other. That is the reality in America. That is the reality of most markets. It is just bloodshed slugging it out against each other to gain market share, to, to, to um, trench warfare, gain an inch in, in, with the competitor. But there is another way. And my submission to go where the water is not so red and instead go to where it is much cleaner and crisper and there are less people so in the us we're very focused on cryptocurrency and money transfers um, we're building this product that'll be remarkable and we need to innovate to create an edge just like sony and it costs huge, funders put in millions and millions of dollars, you know, and I, I feel that money because it's, you know, my money. <laughs> and I'm still taking the risk, right? Not just my money, but it's everyone's money in the company. But I mean, you know, I take a big share of that and a big bet, right? Yeah. But what I'm trying to submit to you is that you need to go back to the customer, you need to go back to the problem and figure out and, and, and this is something about America that I love, is you need to make something that you do or something nearby that you understand that's new, that doesn't have huge competition, and make it easy to do. Just make it easier. Convenience, people pay for convenience in America. I love it. They get everything delivered to them. Like literally, like just like have you ever seen that that clip in Netflix with the guy? You know, put the pen inside my hand and then draw it for me. You know, like that's a level. Um, but people are willing to pay for that. They like to make it easy. Humans love things that are easy, simple to do, convenient. And you know, there are ATM machines. I think in in Times Square that charge twenty percent of the money you're taking out. Just, just think about that for a minute and people are willing to do it. It's a crime. Well, it's not a crime. It's, <laughs> it's a trade, right? It's a trade of you know, convenience that people are willing to pay for. And fundamentally, if what are you going to do that's easier for the customer to ensure that it's, it's, it's a fair trade, that they are willing to pay for that convenience, that so they will hand over their money, they will stop and they will you know, use your, your customer. And that's just the beginning because here people are going to come and copy you and then you need to go faster and you need to act with speed and speed's important in business very important don't hurry you know hurry but don't rush that's that's another thing you take your time think about it it's not 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 a, not a, not a, not a, this is not recklessness um and thank you chris for being here and thank you everyone for listening Again, I apologize for my slightly rugged approach, but I'm giving you the real, the real deal. And, you know, this is not a, this is not a, not a, not a fake broadcast that I've wrapped up and give you. I'm giving the real package here. Um, and that innovation and that speed is what matters. Speed's important in business. Real important. Now is better than tomorrow. Right now, what are you doing right now? That's important. And the I've second thing two, I can tend to you. Sorry, keep going. Well, the second thing I think, Blake, which is absolutely critical that a lot of people don't talk about, and I think it's really important, is, and I encourage everyone to study on this call, and it's something which I think a, a founder or a CEO, and it's probably the most important, second most important thing, apart from operating a great company and, and operating with excellence, is capital allocation. Capital allocation is probably one of the most untalked about topics. And my submission to you is that where you focus your energy and your attention, and when I say capital, it's not just you know, money. I'm talking about the people, the time. What is the priority order of your tech team? What is the number one thing they're focused on? Because people can't be focused on seven things. You have to choose the one thing that is the most important thing, and that is your import, most important uh, decision and debate and counsel that you need to take 
And that focus will determine where your company goes. And right now, my focus for this organization and growing in America is to innovate, to grow, to find the white space, to push into it. And, um, you know, it's hard. It's not easy. This is, this is, this is like, we're getting like slapped in the face every day. You know, things you've tried that haven't worked. Lots of failure going on around here, but I love that. Yeah, plenty of and there are little, no doubt, a lot of hard little, work. Little, little green shoots, little, little opportunities come up and we're pushing hard and we're, we're trying to find it. We're working real hard every day here. Every single person here is working hard. Fantastic, really good. Um, I've got two questions for you. So first one is you mentioned that uh, in your book that there was a point in time where you recognized that you might be a blocker to finders growth and um mm. <laughs> they say that you fired yourself, Fred. Um, so put yourself under performance review and, and gave yourself a, um, a bit of a slap. Um, so talk, talk me through that very quickly. I'd love to hear that. And then I want to finish off with the NFT piece. Sure. Well, when we're born, from the age, you know, when the human 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 body is born, first comes out. And I, have a, I actually have a new little son. He's nine months old, and I'm watching him grow up. Um, yeah, when we're born, we come out, and if you compare humans to any other animal on this planet, humans can't walk. They can't actually even see. They're helpless. And if you look at a horse, if it's born, I'd say within the first two, three hours, it stands up and walks around. Then it starts running. Humans were evolved to, uh, with this massive brain, this ability, which is unique to us, which is most of the stuff we do today, most of the stuff that you are doing in your day-to-day life, you learned. You learned that information. You didn't come out knowing it and you know one of the most powerful things in in, in, in human it'll take time until you know thousands of years for humanity to look back but writing down things is also just as powerful and sharing that knowledge and learning and i encourage everyone on this call and great that you're here and flip is a great company um to build your business with as well and i think there's a question there and we'll come back to that if i can but learning is what it's all about and when I was about 30, 33, 33 years old, I recognized in myself that I was continuously making these, these, these same mistakes. These mistakes of just, I would notice in myself, and I was like, wow. And in those moments, what I noticed was in the moment of the mistake, you know, I'd said something dumb. Um, I noticed that I would get emotional. And that emotion, unfortunately, was causing me to make bad decisions. And bad decisions are, you know, what, what, what is absolutely brutal and punishing for any company. And to be the leader, if your company is outgrown you, your decision-making ability, you're going to be the biggest blocker to its growth. And I was, and I recognized that. The action I took when I realized was number one, I was had I had a fear of making mistakes. I have a fear of make, being. I had a fear of actually being wrong. About I felt I wasn't good enough. I felt I wasn't worthy. I felt wasn't comfortable with losing. I wasn't comfortable with success. I wasn't comfortable with um, being alone. Now those are some pretty heavy emotions that I never paid down. And as a child, from the ages of zero to seven. That's where you learn all those things and need to go back as an adult to become a man and pay down that debt and grow emotionally. Now, that's, this all sounds so bizarre, I know, to a lot of people. But I noticed, and I'm going to say this, but I've noticed in my life, as I've learned to grow emotion, I have an emotional coach. I've been working with it for six years that I'm going to say this, that males, unfortunately, tend to be quite emotionally um, unaware and females are much more aware. And as I catch up and I start to hear what they're saying, um, I, I just so incredibly, I see this whole new world and I'm able to speak to people emotionally and manage that. And when I think about yourself and the reason why I fired myself is that I was emotionally incapable of leading the company. Incapable. 
I was, I fired myself on those grounds. And I went and paid down the debt and I did the work. And I did all the work on those, on those emotions. And I continue to do the work. I'm committed. Un I am not negotiable committed to my personal growth. And I feel now I am in that place where I can start to lead and go back to that place. And I started to innovate and create, interact. And the long, the long journey of that was painful. Um, but I, it was the road and the journey back home to where, you know, I can contribute again to find it. Um, and so if you find yourself emotionally, getting emotional inside your company, you know, and getting angry and frustrated and all those kind of things, I would think that probably potentially it just might be you, not someone else. Uh, and so take responsibility for that and uh, unpack that. And that's what I had to do. Mate, that is super awesome, uh, super enlightening, very helpful for people too, right? Because um, you're perceived as a very successful guy. You are a very successful guy. And then to hear um, the humility and the inner reflection that it takes to do something like that, fire yourself, that is, come out the other side and, and feel amazing about it and then go and take on the US and, and build Finder there is um, very admirable. So thank you for that insight. But um, I want to just hear your very quick perspective on NFTs, well, you can give me any perspective. I'm going to say NFTs as a utility in the real world. But anyway, you can take that any way you want because you're the master of this, I think. Yeah, so I'm going, to, I'm going to park the art for a second, if I can. And, you know, I think art's interesting. And, you know, I think they're, you know, I think that's, that's interesting. But let me tell you about the hotmail of NFTs. Okay. It's actually, it's actually where the win is. The win for you to, for everyone to look at is go and have a look at play to earn, play to earn. Okay. So in the play to earn space, what happens is that there are investors and there are people who buy NFTs and those NFTs enable you to play the game. And when you play the game, you actually earn money. Uh, the one most classic game right now is Axie Infinity. Um, and I actually have started up a venture in this space. Uh, it's called, um, actually I'm advising a few. There's, there's Perion. Uh, there's Balthazar, um, and both of them, you can, they, they have little websites. Um, they actually started as discord channels, which is the most incredible thing. Of course. Um, and these two, well, they're called guilds, but they essentially, they're actually feeding people in the Philippines right now and India, uh, because essentially COVID's like really taken a lot of the jobs away. Um, and what's happened is uh, people are playing this Axie Infinity game and earning money and they're able to be, uh, you know, lent the, the NFTs to play the games. Um, if you want to check out one of the, the guilds, you can go to bltzr.gg. Uh, bltzr, like, .gg. I'm sorry, that's a bizarre, but that's balthazar.gg and perion.gg, um, p-e-r-i-o-n.gg. That might not be the right domain name. Forgive me, I'm just I'm on, the, on the move right now, but I'm pretty sure they are. Um, and what's happening is these NFTs are assets that can uh, enable people to play these games and they store value and people are competing. And this space is one of the fastest growing, most incredible space I've ever, you know, and I've, I've been involved in cryptocurrency since 2017 and I've loved it and enjoyed it, but I'm back. It's, it's, it's happening again. Like cryptocurrency is, it's always should have been in gaming, never was quite there, but um, you know, now it's there. If you head to uh, bltzr.gg, you should be able to find a link to the Discord there. My apologies. Um, yes, firing yourself, I agree. You need to do that. Sorry, Blake, did I answer your question? But that's the space I'd look at. Uh, the art is a different thing. Art's about a story. You know, if you can tell the story, uh, that's what that's all about. I, 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 I gotta say, I'm gonna call myself out. I don't know that as well. I know the play to earn space. And that's the one that's growing so fast. I'm going, to, I'm going to stop there, but that's awesome, mate. This has been so good. Um, your insights are super helpful. Um, your honesty is helpful. Uh, the growth journey that Find has gone on. M many people on the call today uh, will are from all over the world. They won't know Finder. They do now. Um, they'll no doubt check it out. Um, it's a really great success story. The evolution of the business is exciting. The fact that I think you said. There's thousands of items that you can pair from crypto all the way through to vacuum cleaners. So thank you so much for your time today. 
all the best over in NYC and I would love to catch up with you in due course, mate. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for my, I know it's a bit, un, I was a bit unconventional. I apologize to the, and thank you to the, all the organizers of this conference. I know how much work it is to put together and, and, and such an honor to be here. I just want to leave you with one note if I can, Blake. I know I'm Please. pushing the time. But let me just tell you this as you're starting out. I know there's a lot of questions there, but I want to give you one principle. One principle that I want you to take away. And that is this. In what you are doing, I want you to stay determined. Because the universe rewards the people who are unreasonably, unreasonably determined to get what they want. And with that, I wish you guys all the best of luck with your businesses and what you're doing.